There are winners, and there are losers, and there are people who have not discovered how to win. How hungry are you for success? What are you willing to give up in order to get what you want? What sacrifices are you willing to make? What excuses are you willing to let go? Are you willing to experience humiliation, embarrassment, rejection as part of the price? Are you truly committed to success or are you just liking the idea? Most people, that's the problem. They just kind of want it. They talk about it, they think about it, they complain about it, but they don't really want it. Most of us know what we could do to change things for the better. And we spend our time and our energy talking ourselves out of doing those things. And the other thing that I convince people of, because this is so true, it's the littlest stuff. The little things make all the difference. I think pushing yourself physically is the number one factor of life. That is the true spot where you can really dive deep. Life's about self-discipline. It is about self-discipline. We tend to do the things that are easy. And that is, the, it, it builds no mental toughness. It builds no mental hardening. It builds nothing. When you work out, working out is where you can build that the fastest. Because it's a constant, it gives you instant feedback. Instant, yeah, you may not lose the weight you want to real fast, but the discipline it takes, it transfers over to all aspects of your life. It's not people, man, why are you always working out? Stop, stop looking at that way. This is the foundation of life. When you look in the mirror, every morning we all look in the mirror to get ready to go to work, to go anywhere. The first thing you see is your reflection. If you don't like what you see in the morning, you lost the war already. It's not about even liking what you see. It's about looking in the mirror and you may start, man, I feel different. That reflection may not, that reflection is not everything. It's a feeling you're supposed to get. So you have to, in life, once you leave your house, the war begins. In your house, you have some control. And that reflection in that mirror, you have to control that reflection in the mirror. That's how you start your day. If you leave your house feeling like, okay, I can fight. I've established the mentality to fight. And that all that comes from working out. It's not just from, you know, you can't find that in the office. That moment that you know you need to do something that feels slightly uncomfortable and your resignation, your excuses, your self-doubt start cranking up in your head, you gotta move. You see, if you don't have a vision of where you go and if you don't have a goal where you go, you drift around and you never end up anywhere. It's like you can have the best ship in the world, you can have the best airplane in the world. If the pilot or the captain doesn't know where to go, it would just drift around. It would not end up anywhere or most likely in the wrong place. And visualizing your goal and going after it makes it fun. You've got to have a purpose no matter what you do in life. You've got to have a purpose. So that's rule number one, have a vision. Don't start anything unless you've invested what it's going to take to finish it. The most important conversation you'll ever have is the one you have with yourself. You wake up with it, you walk around with it, eventually you'll act on it. The first thing you have to say about initiative is uh, no one gives you initiative, you have to take it. You can be born into a whole lot of a nightmare, but you can, God can usher you into a dream. So if you look at somebody who's really successful and you think, wow, I mean, they're, they're so amazing, they're such a genius, you gotta dig underneath and you gotta remember something. People are rewarded in public for what they've practiced for years in private. If we act like the person we want to become, we take down that persona, that's the way it happens. I remember when Cary Grant died, in the Toronto Daily Star, which is a full newspaper, there was a whole page of quotes about Cary Grant. And in the bottom right-hand corner was one by Archibald Leach. And it said, I acted like Cary Grant for so long, I became him. That was his real name. Cary Grant was his stage name. 
but he took on that persona. I watched the movie Patton a lot, and I watched the movie uh, Lawrence of Arabia with Peter O'Toole. And, and you watch that, or George C. Scott and Patton, and the, the acting is phenomenal. They're not acting the part, they're living the part. That's what we've got to do in this business. You want to act like the person you want to become. Now, do you know why most people don't do that? Most people don't act that way because they're overly concerned with what they think. Nobody knows who they are. But you see, we were all raised with those rules. What would they think? What would the neighbors think? I found out they don't. I was reading a book on forgiveness. And they had a line in there that says, forgive and grow. I had to let that luggage go. You see, your mind is, is you know, when you go into a service station to get gas, you don't go in there and just start pumping. When you push the lever up, it clears the previous bill. By the same token, if you want to begin to move, you've got to clear your mind of all the unnecessary luggage and baggage that's weighing us down. I couldn't move, I couldn't think about what am I going to do to get out of this situation because I was so concerned about what happened and what he did to me and how bad it was. I was so stuck in that, I couldn't even focus on what I should have done. Feeling sorry for myself and angry, none of that was taking me anywhere. So pretty soon I, I learned through effort, made a conscious, deliberate, determined effort. I had to let it go, I had to forgive it. Let it go and begin to focus on developing myself. And I say to you, you're going to have people to do things to you. Things are going to happen to you. And the most important thing to do is to harness your will and let it go. And move so you can grow. So you can get on with your life. It doesn't matter about what happens to you. What matters is, what are you going to do about it? What are you going to do now, Les? Huh? How long are you going to tell everybody? at the bus stop and anybody who would stand and listen to you. <laughs> How long you would repeat the same thing over and over and over and over and over again? How many times do we have to hear that? Don't go around telling people we, what your story is. Everybody has a story. 80% don't care and 20% glad it's you. <laughs> <laughs> Don't listen to the naysayers. Don't listen to the naysayers. Everything I ever did, the thing that I heard out of people's mouth was, that's impossible. That can't be done. Oh no. I remember when I want to be a bodybuilding champion, including my parents and everyone else around me, said this is impossible. Why don't you become a ski champion? That's what they do in Austria. Or a bicycle champion, they do some track and field. You can't be a bodybuilding champion. That is exactly what I heard. And of course, I proved to the people that it can't be done. So whenever someone said to me, it can't be done, I heard it can be done. When they said no, I heard yes. And when they said it's impossible, I heard it is possible. I'm a strong believer of what Nelson Mandela said, that everything is always impossible until someone does it. All of us have experienced some tragedy, and if we haven't, we will. And you can either let it destroy your life, or you can build upon it. You can permit it to let, you, let it hold you down, or you can decide, I'm not going to let that happen to me. I'm bigger than this. Make a declaration to yourself. Declare all out war that you're going to get out of this rut. I don't care how good you are, I don't care how talented you are, I don't care how much you work on yourself, there are some times when things aren't going to go right. They just are not going to go right. There are times when anything that can happen will happen. Murphy's Law will be knocking at your door. Why? I don't know why. That's called life and you have to deal with it. Sometimes your life will be in a slump, just like sports. Some of the best shooters can't hit baskets different times in games. They get in a slump. Do they sit on the sideline and say, you know, I just didn't hit a basket today? 
No, they continue to execute. I suggest to you that if you are facing a challenge, don't stop. Stay busy, work your plan. Continue to do those things that you know that work for you after you have evaluated yourself in the situation. Next thing is that you've got to activate the thinker in you. Don't allow your emotions to control you. We are emotional, but you want to begin to discipline your emotion. If you don't discipline and contain your emotions, they will use you. Your mind goes on automatic, just like a god. You know, I loved reading the book called As a Man Think It by James Allen. He uses the analogy of the mind being like a garden. You know, weeds don't have to have any encouragement to grow. You don't have to water them. They don't have to get sunshine. They don't have to have fertile ground. They will grow through the cracks of a sidewalk. Am I right? But if you want to grow orchids or roses or any kind of exotic flowers, there are special processes and procedures you must go through. Well, by the same token, you don't have to force yourself or motivate yourself to think negatively, to be depressed, to hate somebody, to want revenge, to want to get back at somebody, to beat yourself up over the head, to feel loaded with guilt. You don't have to make any effort to do that. Your mind is on automatic. It will do that by itself. But if you want to begin to move into your own personal greatness, if you want to begin to really enjoy a happy, successful, healthy life, you've got to be willing to go against the tide. You've got to be willing to harness your will and say, in spite of this, I'm in control here. I'm not going to let this get me down. I'm not going to let this destroy me. I'm coming back. And I'll be stronger and better because of it. You have got to make a declaration that this is what you stand for. You're standing up for your dreams. You're standing up for peace of mind. You're standing up for health. You want it. And you're going to go all out to have it. It's not going to be easy when you want to change. It's not easy. If it were in fact easy, everybody would do it. But if you're serious, you'll go all out. To, yes, I'm going to turn this situation around. I'm not going to sit back and, and moan and cry over what happened and what went wrong and who did what. I'm going to do something about this situation.